when we are interacting with our, 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 our Muslim community at large, uh, which in, in our context is, again, uh, primarily South Asian or primarily, primarily Arab, and again, Arab uh, um, is, is not necessarily always exclusive from black, but overwhelmingly non-black Arabs, mm -hmm. We don't, we don't find people within that community, particularly the leadership, that has a sort of a built-in awareness or understanding of uh, why it's relevant to discuss um, issues of anti-black racism, um, things like social movements like Black Lives Matter. There is not a, there's not a bridging of the Islamic message uh, and understanding that in fact, a good chunk, a good part of our community uh, is experiencing many of the same thing that has given same things that has given that has given impetus to this type of movement, because there is not an, a lens of an awareness around the issue of uh, of, of blacks being over policed, blacks being overwhelmingly found in low income communities, blacks being on the lower rungs of various economic uh, pieces of data, uh, blacks being disenfranchised so many different aspects of the black experience that are realities now for black Muslims are not discussed uh, at the leadership level in our institutions. Because our, leader, our leadership, are, they're, not, they're not trained or they don't seem to have a connection, uh, as Sister Samuels mentioned earlier, to the black community uh, to understand how, how these, these things that are happening uh, across, uh, around the community that we're in are actually real issues that are in fact Muslim issues that we should be we should be discussing as well. So uh, you, you know one of the one of the things that I've, I I feel as though separate the community is that uh, again just going back to the context that brought us here, right? Uh, if if you look at um, if you look at the context particularly of uh, the the African Muslim community and their arrival to Canada as opposed to the southeast uh, the the South Asian and the Arab, th those circumstances were entirely different. So our ability to set our roots and our foundations in this country uh, were drastically different, where some were forced to you know, uh, um, resort to uh, low-income housing, social housing, and the, uh, the effects that lie and exist there. But we also have to acknowledge the conservative nature of our communities, mm -hmm. right? There's an inability to uh, establish those links to say, okay, you know, over-policing affects this portion of our community. Uh, their immediate reaction would be, well, why are you being over? What do the police want from you, right? Mm -hmm. There's an immediate uh, uh, um, vilification of an individual who may express issue or concern with their interaction with the police. So that, that connection isn't there yet. And again, that comes from the people that are in decision-making positions within uh, the Meshid administration to be able to step outside of the box and say, well, hold on, is this legitimate? And then be able to ask rational questions to figure out how they might be able to help. But that connection isn't there. What I notice, I think, with interacting with the Muslim community at the Masjid, but also uh, at the university level where you get the opportunity to meet people from different, er from different walks of life and you have a lot of access to mentorship that you wouldn't have access to if you were not mm. uh, within the institution, is that there's a sort of race to the top that's happening within the Muslim community. Everybody's trying to make it. There's, you know, we, w we want to be successful. We want to we want to overcome Islamophobia. We want to overcome classism. We want to be at the top. We want to be able to represent each other. And we want to say that we have a CEO here and we have someone on the news and we have someone running this company and that company. But in that rush, I find that there's almost like a, a lack of desire to engage with the Muslim community that is that is mm. struggling a little bit. And a lot of us are black, and that's just the way it is. Mm. And so when we're talking about what we might fund, what projects we might have, how we might invigorate the Muslim community, there are all of these grandiose ideas about, you know, different projects we might have, different, you know, documentaries we might film about what's going on abroad or, you know, let's have a conversation about how the Muslim community has come so far or how we might fund, you know, our neighboring community doing X, Y, and Z instead of talking about how we might build ourselves up from the ground up. And that's, that's something that I find a little unsettling like, as a young person who is, you know, occasionally looking for mentorship and who can find it because of my ties with the university. What I find when I speak to people is that they're, they're looking for kids who are already at the top. Mm. No, nobody's looking for anyone in the community right now. No one wants to be in the community right now. No one, because to me, one of the fundamental parts of, of Islam is that, you know, like we give in charity where we're, we're charitable at home first. Mm -hmm. We start here, mm. you know, and if you are purposefully overlooking your own people in the, in the hopes of 
I don't know, playing some kind of weird PR game, trying to ensure that Muslims look great in the media and trying to separate yourselves from problems that are happening within your community by brandishing them as a Somali problem, as a black problem, as a gang violence problem, mm -hmm. you know, as something that has nothing to do with us. To me, when, you know, somebody asks me about why the Muslim community doesn't concern itself with anything to do with the, you know, black experience, it really, the answer is, they don't believe black is Muslim. Muslim is not synonymous with black. Black is black people are not Muslim people. You know, that's just what it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you happen to convert, mashallah, rid yourself of your blackness, put on a abaya, and you're good to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, you cannot be, name. yeah, change your name. There you go. You cannot be black and Muslim. So mm -hmm. as soon as, you know, they're, Concerned with, of course, because they, a lot of uh, them are new immigrants, so they need to concern themselves with what's happening in their communities, of course, because you, you start at home with your family, mm -hmm. right? So what's happening in South A, what's happening in, in the Arab lands, what's happening here and there, but, uh, you know, send your money there, you know, support that, but I'm not going to look to my neighbor until I fix what's happening in my family. Mm -hmm. And my family is Muslim. Yep. Mm -hmm. My neighbor is not. Even if the neighbor converted. You know, so there's convert uh, sisters, brothers and sisters, who as soon as they convert in the mosque, you know, the nice people around, you know, the people of conscience come and hug them. Mm -hmm. If they were white, everyone would hug them. Mm -hmm. Even the brothers would try to line up and hug the, the white sister. Okay, but it's a black sister. The people of conscience, the people who are aware, the people are who actually understand that she just literally became a Muslim, will come and hug her and greet her. Um, and then that's it. She's left to the wind. You know, maybe somebody might give her a a, a, a jilbab or a baya as a gift and a hijab, and that's it. She's done. Right. So, so. They're not looking to them to help anybody else. Mm -hmm. They're looking in the media. They're looking at the thing. I said, oh, these people, what is it? You know? Yeah. And so, and, and that was even, you know, happening from the Somali community until the Somali children started adapting the ways of the black people because mm -hmm. they're black. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're living, like you're saying, in the, in, the, in the communities and stuff like that. So now when the South Asians and the Arabs are looking in the media and seeing these people, you know, it doesn't matter if his name is Muhammad, Ahmed, whatever. Yeah. He's a black boy yeah. and he went and did something like a black, another black kid. He went and shot, I got shot. You know, that's what black people do. So mm -hmm. why am I going to support that? I'm not, you know, I, uh, I'm i going to support, you know, someone over there who's, you know, in a, in a real struggle. The wars, you know, that, you know, that's happening in those other countries, that's my nice. back home countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why am I going to support, you know? And then it goes into, of course, like the Native Americans, same same story. They're not Muslim. So why mm. am I going to do that? Like, you know, 